Hey, yo, what's up, family? Good morning. Man, look at the moon. It's so pretty this morning. It was beautiful last night, too. I was reading in um, Matthew 16, family. You know, it's talking about, Jesus is talking about in this chapter, the demanding signs from, you know, from God, from the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Basically, you know, you see where Jesus calls them hypocrites, that they concern the weather, they concern all these things, but they can't discern the signs of the times. And he's also telling them that a wicked and adulterous generation seeking after a sign, you know, there's not going to be no sign for that generation, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. So he's leaving them, but he's warning, you know, Peter and the, the rest of the disciples about them and, you know, not to follow them and not to listen to their, their, their doctrine, more or less. So he's talking about the bread, and he's asking, "O ye of little faith," you know, he's he's talking to them. So I wanted to read to you guys out of Matthew 16, where they are they're kind of confused on where Jesus is talking about the leaven of bread, but what Jesus is actually talking about, because we know he talked, you know, he spoke in parables a lot. He's actually speaking about the doctrine that the Sadducees and the Pharisees were teaching which were in error, which were wrong, you know, family. So it's always a generation of, you know, demanding signs. And he's basically saying, you know, wicked generation, a, an adulterous generation sh shall not receive it. And, but it's funny how they can discern, you know, the weather, they can discern everything else, you know, but, um, but not anything like that. And as it goes on, if you look in, let's see, we'll start in verse, um, verse 18 so Matthew 16 verse 18 and I say unto thee thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and who and who whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosened in heaven then charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth, Jesus began to show unto his disciples how they must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day. And you can see here, family, where Peter, he's like, wait a minute Jesus we ain't having this so in verse 22 you see where Peter says then Peter took him and began to rebuke him saying so not look family not every rebuke is a good rebuke it needs to be of the Holy Spirit not of your flesh and see in this moment Peter got in his flesh when he was speaking to Jesus then Peter took him and began to rebuke him saying be it far from thee Lord this shall not be unto thee but he turned, so Jesus was like, okay, and said unto Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So you can see, family, where, you know, where God, where Jesus is telling him, look, even though Peter rebuked him, that this, you know, Jesus knew this had to come to pass for all of us, not just for Peter, but for every generation. Verse 24, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. That means denying the flesh family, following him, not following your own ways, but following him. The moon's going away. <laughs> and then it goes on into verse 25, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So he's preparing us, you know, he's telling Peter and he's telling us, look, you may lose your life for, for me, for being for being one of my disciples, being one of my followers. You may, you may lose your life for me, but there's great gain. There's great reward in that family. And we know that. So he's telling Peter this. Verse 26, for what is a man profited if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Family, nothing in this world worthy of your soul and worthy of being in the kingdom of God. There ain't nothing worth profit in this world. Whatever profit you think you can make, whatever gain you think you can gain in this world, the riches, the glory, 
the attention, whatever it may be. None of it is worthy. None of it's worth it. If you go on in verse 27, for the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. So you'll hear a lot of people say, well, we're not saved by works. Of course not. But once you become a follower of Christ, you're reborn, you're baptized in the faith, you want to do the works. It's not, it's not like you're forced into doing it. You want to do it. Because you want others to experience the mercy and the glory and the love and the forgiveness that you've experienced. Verse 28, Verily I say unto you, There be some standing here which shall not taste of death, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Glory be to God every day, family. I love you guys. Have a good one. Remember, you know, there's all kinds of different doctrines out there and a lot of people are in error and a lot of people don't want to hear it. I, I see so much nonsense sometimes, family. A lot of you guys are awesome, don't get me wrong, but there are some people, man, some of y'all just, you say the most foolish things in my comment section. I mean, of course I pray for you, but Lord help you. I just, there's so many different religions and different ways to God. And when there is one way, one truth, one life, and that is through Yeshua, that is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Don't be deceived by a fallen world, family. What are you going to profit from a fallen world? We're just passing through, family. We, this is not our permanent home. But while you're here, you want to take others home with you. You want them to be able to experience the glory of God, too. Try to do that today if you can, even if it's just one person.